Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I've got another in my Human Rainbow series. Today I'm calling it a teacher thank you card, but this could be any time of year for a teacher or for just a grammar crazy person like me. There's a lot of amazing sentiments in this set. I love the sense of humor that Art Impressions brings to a stamp set like this teacher rules set. Very funny. And I'm going to use a couple different ethnicities. We're going to have an older white lady sitting at the desk and a standing African-American lady who is pointing and waving toward what's going to be in the background. So I am going to have a crazy background here for you. But I'm going to use a color combination that I've used probably a good bit before. This tends to work well for me, but there's a million different color combinations that work fine. And know that when you do a combination that somebody has done, say here on YouTube, that your colors, when you may choose the exact same ones, your colors are going to look different than their colors because of the amount of color that you put on the paper. It all depends on how much ink ends up on the piece of paper because if you use more or less than they do, you have a heavier or a lighter touch, it's just going to be different. You need to really work through what works for you and not worry about making it look exactly like that person. Work on your general techniques and that other people can teach you. I have a Copic Jumpstart class that will teach you some of that basics, but really the only thing that's going to really improve your coloring drastically is going to be actually coloring a lot, all the time, constantly keep yourself busy, keep yourself occupied with doing it because that is what makes you get better at anything. I know they say 10,000 hours at something improves you, and while I don't think it's actually true, it gives you a better chance at improving. <laughs> because if you think about going to the gym and working out a lot, you don't expect if you only go once every week or once a month that you're going to have the improvement in your body that you would have had if you had gone every day or if you'd gone every other day. So use that mentality when you're actually trying to think about your coloring and your artwork because you need to actually be engaged in it on a regular basis and practice a lot. So I'm going to be coloring the two of them in a scene and usually I don't know what scene I'm going to be doing when I start coloring. I just start coloring because I don't really know otherwise. I, I just jam on it and as I'm coloring I sort of try to picture what is the setting that these teachers are in. We have one at a desk and we have one who's standing and they're obviously talking to each other. They're happy. And I knew that I was going to use the I'm silently correcting your grammar stamp set for the sentiment. And I figured I'm probably going to end up embossing it on top of something in the background, which a chalkboard is a great thing to emboss on top of because it's got lots of empty space there and I can emboss it in white. But the rest of the scene then is what I need to think about what I want to do with it. And how do I want that set up? Do I want the whole chalkboard across the entire thing or just behind a portion of it? And what I realized was if I put a black chalkboard behind the lady with the dark hair and the dark skin, you're not going to see her. She's going to basically disappear into that dark chalkboard. I could go for a green chalkboard though if I wanted the whole thing behind them to be the chalkboard. So think through those kinds of things when you're trying to decide what scene there's going to be. You also probably want less detail in the background than you might normally think of photographically. So even though there might be all different kinds of things in the background, keep it a little simpler than you might originally have thought of doing because, you know, it's just a thing. You don't want to detract from the main image in the, the drawing and piece of art. So consider those kinds of things as you ponder what the scene's going to be. Ponder what the floor will look like. Where is the ceiling? Where is it going to start? Where is it going to lead to? Are you going to have a vanishing point? Which I've, I've done a video on vanishing point. You can search my YouTube channel for that. And there's all different kinds of ways that you can think about the different parts of a drawing in order to try to make a scene out of it. And here I am just continuing the coloring, coloring, coloring as my mind is reeling. 
and I did decide to give her a red outfit because I figured in a classroom I was probably not going to use red for the walls. I didn't want to use anything that intense. wanted something a little duller so that I'm drawing attention to her and red is a nice warm color that's going to pop forward along with that yellow and those two will will pull them to the front of the image and the lady at the desk has that nice bright green which is also going to pull her forward and then the colors in the background I'm going to want to be a little more on the muted side. So in addition the books that she's holding are also going to be on the bright side. She's got that nice bright red apple. All those kind of things are going to pop forward. I'm using a technique I've used a lot for wood in the past and I'll use that throughout this because I'm going to put a couple of elements in the background that are going to have some wood in them and basically it's drawing the wood in a darker color and then going over it with a few strokes of the medium color and here I went both directions wouldn't recommend that all the time but there you go so here's where I decided I was going to put the chalkboard in the background I decided it would go partly behind the seated lady because she's got white hair and a light outfit so she's gonna show up well I wanted it to touch the other lady, so I wanted her to interact with it, that background image. And then I wanted it to stop, of course, before it hits the ground because chalkboards don't go that far. So it was a matter of figuring out exactly how far. I chose a lighter color to start with because that's gonna be easier to fix if I decided I was going to shave some off. And so I always recommend if you're going to start with your drawing in markers instead of in a pencil, which I don't like using pencil on Copic marker because it'll trap it underneath. Um, then I recommend trying to start with a light color so you can sort of sketch it in and get it sort of set and then figure out where you're going to add the different elements and then add them on top little by little. I decided she needed a door here. So the other teacher came in through the door and I'm going to give her door a nice bit of wood around it. I'm going to sort of draw some frames around it. It's not going to be really well seen and again with the, the same thing with that desk that it looked really detailed and then all of a sudden it came all together when I put that medium tone over and do the same thing and use the exact same colors because that's going to unify the image it's going to pull all of those elements together and it's going to make basically make it match and then I used a nice dull color for the walls that are going to be behind and above this uh, nice nice really dull kind of a greenish color and then I decided to add more of the same wood treatment around the chalkboard and that again is going to pull everything kind of together didn't like necessarily the way it lined up exactly with the little old lady's desk and something funky has happened to my colors here because look how great the colors came out in reality something funky happened in the middle of the video there but I used some blue on the bottom as well as on the window to match with the blue book she's holding and just kind of tried to tie a lot of those different elements together on the finished card. So there you go. There is my finished card with my embossed sentiment on the chalkboard. If you'd like to see some more videos, there's more here. You can click on my face to subscribe to my channel. And of course, there's a Copic class there if you're interested in learning more about Copic markers. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.